you don't, quote unquote, invest in an IRA. The IRA is not a product. The IRA is a tax code. It is tax deferred money held on an individual level. Welcome to the M Advisor Podcast. I'm Paul Morton. The M Advisor Podcast is a financial podcast for busy professionals to get insights into the emotional side of finances. Understanding what to do with your finances is important, but it's also equally important to understand why. The M Advisor Podcast exists to help you get a clear vision about your money, what steps you should consider, and why you should consider them. Everyone is different, and we should celebrate that. Every financial plan should be different, too. Music is used with permission from Forum. Please find the band Forum on Spotify. Discussions in this show should not be construed as specific recommendation or investment advice. Always consult with your investment professional before making important investment decisions. Securities offered through Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a registered broker-dealer, member of FINRA, SIPC. Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Welcome to the M Advisor podcast. This is Paul Morton. New episodes of the M Advisor podcast come out on payday, the 15th and 30th of each month. Today is an introduction to IRAs. What is an IRA? IRA stands for Individual Retirement Arrangement, more oftentimes referred to as an Individual Retirement Account. Before we go into the different kinds of IRAs and dispel some of the jargon attached to them, let's discuss some of the things that all IRAs have in common. First of all, all IRAs are owned at the individual level. Even if an IRA is sponsored and funded by the employer, it's owned at the individual level. That means there's no vesting schedules in an IRA. And what a vesting schedule is, is it is the time it takes for an employee to work somewhere before money in a retirement plan that was provided by the employer becomes the employee's. All growth in an IRA is tax deferred. This means there's no capital gains taxation on any of the growth that occurs inside of the IRA. All IRAs pass by beneficiary law, and that means they can avoid probate. So when you set up an IRA, you name your beneficiaries, and when the IRA holder, owner, dies, then it can pass directly to whoever the IRA owner names as a beneficiary. That will avoid probate. It will get money to a beneficiary much quicker, theoretically, and much cheaper. And it's also not public record on who receives the money if it's passed by beneficiary law. If a beneficiary is not named or a beneficiary predeceases, the IRA owner, and there's not a secondary or contingent beneficiary, the IRA will be pulled into the probate court and passed accordingly. All IRAs have a 10% early withdrawal penalty. Any traditional type of IRA will have a 10% early withdrawal penalty if funds are withdrawn prior to age 59 and a half. And with a Roth IRA, you can withdraw the basis or what you've contributed prior to age 59 and a half without penalty, as long as the account's been open for five years or longer. There are limits on how much you can put into an IRA, even if it's sponsored by an employer. And so for traditional IRAs, Roth and traditional, that are independently owned and funded by the individual, will have lower limits than if an IRA is funded by an employer. And finally, all IRAs can accept a rollover. And the term rollover is a jargon and fancy term for transfer without tax. So when you roll over, let's say, an old 401k into an IRA, you are transferring the 401k into an IRA, and it's not a taxable event. There are certain rules that must occur for the rollover to not be taxable. And in short, those rules are, one, the rollover check 
cannot be made to the individual. It must be made to the custodian. So if you custody at, let's say, Fidelity, it would be made out to Fidelity, FBO, your name. And FBO stands for benefit of. Secondly, on a rollover, the check must be deposited within 60 days of receipt of the check. And for a rollover in the digital world, 60 days is a lot of time. If those two criteria are not met, then the entire transfer could be taxable. If that criteria is met, then the transfer is a rollover, and it's a transfer without being a taxable event. So let's get into what kinds of IRAs exist, or at least what are the most popular IRAs, and then what's different about each one. First of all, there's just the traditional IRA. And a traditional IRA is is set up and owned and funded by an individual. A traditional IRA is a way to get tax-deferred retirement money into an individual account. Otherwise, you typically have to have, let's say, a 401k or 403b or an employer-sponsored retirement plan in order to get tax-deferred money into an individual account. But the IRA allows it to be owned on an individual basis. A traditional IRA carries much of the same rules as a 401k or 403b. You cannot withdraw any funds prior to age 59 and a half without a 10% penalty. There are exceptions. And if you don't withdraw enough money by age 72, there's a 50% penalty called an RMD or required minimum distribution. A traditional IRA has some really cool and unique options in that when you are funding the traditional IRA, you get to choose if you fund it with pre-tax dollars or it's tax deductible, the the contributions are with pre-tax dollars or after-tax dollars. So you can make the contributions deductible against your current income or not. And there are potentially advantages to both. Any contributions that are earmarked and coded as being not deductible to you will come out not taxed to you on the distribution because you've already paid taxes on the contribution. However, you must fill out Form 8606 with your taxes for that tax year in order for the IRA contributions to be coded as being non-deductible with the IRS. Or many people choose to deduct their contributions to an IRA. And by doing so, it lowers your taxable income. So if you make $100,000 and you put $6,000 into an IRA, you pay taxes on $94,000 and $6,000 is saved into the IRA that is not yet taxed to you. In a traditional IRA, when you pull money out in a distribution, you pay tax on all of that money as income tax, except when you pull out any money that was contributed after tax. With a traditional IRA, there are typically lower income limits in order to fund a traditional IRA and deduct the contributions. However, there are no income limitations, meaning it does not matter how much you make in order to fund an IRA and not deduct the contributions. So an IRA can be a really useful tool One, for owning retirement funds on an individual level, or you can set it up as a quote-unquote box for rollover contributions as well to collect old retirement plans. Like a traditional IRA, a Roth IRA is a popular form of an IRA. And what a Roth IRA does is it will accept 
only non-deductible contributions, meaning you cannot contribute to a Roth IRA and lower your taxable income as a result. However, all of the growth inside of a Roth IRA is not taxable to you. So it still enjoys tax deferred growth. And what is important about a Roth IRA is that when you take the money out in a distribution, you pay no tax on both the growth and the contributions you've made. It's completely tax free as long as you make the withdrawals appropriately. As we mentioned before with a Roth IRA, you have to have the account set up for at least five years. And by having that account set up for five years or more, you can access the money that you've put in tax-free and penalty-free even prior to age 59 and a half. Since there are no deferred income taxes on the withdrawals of an IRA, There are no required minimum distributions, meaning if you get to age 72 and you don't take any money out, there's no penalty. There's no 50% penalty on not taking enough money out. The government is not waiting on taxes to be paid. A Roth IRA, like a traditional IRA, can accept rollovers. However, it can only accept rollovers of Roth money, so a Roth 401k or Roth 403b. Or you can convert traditional IRA money or 401k, 403b money into a Roth IRA. So a Roth IRA can accept rollovers or contributions from a non-Roth retirement account. However, by doing so, that can create a taxable event. So if you have a traditional IRA that you transfer into a Roth IRA, you will pay income tax as a distribution on the traditional IRA to recode it into a Roth IRA. And that is called a Roth IRA conversion. And then finally, we have employer-sponsored IRAs available. So there are two popular ones. One is called a SIMPLE IRA. SIMPLE stands for Savings Incentive Match Plan for Employees. And the other one is called a SEP IRA. A SEP is a Simplified Employee Pension. These IRAs are quote-unquote sponsored or set up from an employer level. The SIMPLE IRA will have funding limits almost double of what the traditional and Roth IRAs will have. The simple IRA can be funded by both the employee and the employer, and the employer typically funds either on a flat percentage of income basis or on a percentage of income in a match. So up to, let's say, 3% of income, an employer can match if an employee decides he or she wants to also contribute. A SEP IRA, however, is different. A SEP IRA is only funded by the employer. The employee cannot fund a SEP IRA. And the employer can decide how much to fund for a SEP IRA. And if the employer funds the SEP IRA for one employee, including his or herself, then he or she must fund everybody's SEP IRA at the same percentage of income for everybody. So a SEP IRA can typically accept 20% of income up to about 55 to 60,000. And that number, that amount that a SEP IRA is constantly changing each year, indexed for inflation. The simple and SEP IRA rules will typically fall under the traditional IRA rules, meaning you cannot withdraw money prior to age 59 and a half without a 10% penalty, and then it will have the RMD, the required minimum distribution rules attached to it, so that if you do not withdraw enough by age 72, there is a 50% penalty imposed on the simple and the SEP IRA, the employer-sponsored IRAs. The simple IRA must be established for at least two years 
before it can be rolled over into a traditional IRA. All IRAs, whether it be a traditional, a Roth, or employer-sponsored or employer-funded IRA, all IRAs are just tax codes. So the account can hold cash just like a bank account. You don't, quote-unquote, invest in an IRA. The IRA is not a product. The IRA is a tax code. It is tax-deferred money held on an individual level. So I hope that was helpful in understanding the basics of IRAs. IRAs, because the rules and laws are changing so rapidly every year, can be fairly complicated. But for the most part, understanding that an IRA is just a tax code and the basic differences between a traditional and Roth IRA can be really helpful to figuring out what you have, how they work, and then how they affect the bigger picture of your financial plan. I'm Paul Morton. This is the M Advisor Podcast. New episodes come out every payday, the 15th and 30th of each month. You can find similar content at m-advisor.com. This is the M Advisor Podcast.